We are back with our featured guest, Diana Avador, head of trading at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, we were talking about a lot of different things yeah, during the commercial break, um, but, but let's topic. start with uh, well, let's start with the Fed tomorrow in terms of expectations for rate hikes, and then also really the subsequent rate hikes and how people need to be thinking about that from a positioning perspective. Rate hikes. So we're going to have a rate hike tomorrow, almost 100 percent. I think it's at 98. Mm -hmm. um, let's give it a, a chance that it's not, but it will. I think it, um, the narrative rests on um, the tapering um, or the balance sheet management. Um, I was talking, I, I, saw, I came in today this morning thinking that we're going to be disappointed with the amount of detail that we're going to get tomorrow. Mm. And the more I speak to people, the more I realize that the street is kind of expecting to get hawkish information. Um, so that was totally different than what I kind of felt would be. So I wasn't aligned with consensus. So we'll see. Um, you know, the data has been sort of soft in the U.S. Um, so a lot of people are criticizing this rate increase. But with unemployment at, I don't know, four and a half, less than four and a half percent, I think they have no choice. And this is not truly a hike. It's a normalization, mm -hmm. honestly. And, um, and, the, and the tapering or the, the QE takeaway we're normalizing. We're, the, the world is normalizing. If you take, um, we took a, a combination of 20 developed market indices, and that's making new high. Call it, think of it as global country mm -hmm. stock market breadth is positive. So generally speaking, the world is expanding mm -hmm. and everybody's doing well. We should normalize policy. Um, so I think we get that. So what happens to the U.S. dollar? And then what happens to the Canadian dollar? Because we've had yeah. that to be quite... Um, so U.S. dollar is probably poised to go up, the more hawkish, of course, the situation is. In terms of Canadian dollar, um, you know, it's had a huge rally in the last couple of days. Um, Mr. Polos has been on the dovish side of a strong economic data. Mm -hmm. And everybody was criticizing the fact that he was too dovish given the strong economic data. And so to me, this is just a bit of a normalization. Plus, our biggest neighbor is raising rates. Mm -hmm. And um, Mr. Polos, even when the Canadian dollar weakened, he was talking it down and now is just talking it up. Nothing really is getting done. So what might, you might what see you in this, there's done. no rate increase, there's nothing, mm -hmm. no, no, pol no policy action, right? Mm -hmm. There's no actual rate increase. I don't think that there will be a rate increase in July um, 12th, which is the next Bank of Canada. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's going to be a wait and see. We do have an export-led economy. Do you, do you think we'll get one in 2017? Most people don't. That's right. And I think that what this might do if the narrative, uh, if the hawkish um, Bank of Canada narrative continues, um, you might see people, some economists, move their rate expectations from 18 to maybe the fourth quarter, 17. Mm -hmm. um, but six months is a long time nowadays. Yeah. Lots of headlines between now and then. Da oh, we'll see. Dana, I want to get your take then on um, if the Fed raises rates and depending on what they say tomorrow in terms of more hawkish or less. We, we saw last Friday the FANG stocks that a lot of people own, certainly a lot of money managers own, I think a lot of our viewers own, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, just to name a few, under some significant pressure. As rates rise, the view is that the value of these companies too high if you've got rates rising. And, um, you know, I, I guess but today they're rebounding. So where do you stand in terms of looking at these FANG stocks? What, one argument that I read was really interesting, and it said that, look, these kind of tech companies that are overvalued or perceived to be overvalued today and liken it to the tech boom and bust, um, you shouldn't make that, that same relation because they're ca they're, they have cash flow yield today whereas they didn't during the tech boom. Do you agree with, and therefore they can continue to run, you can continue to buy them today. Right. What do you say? So three things. One is the PEs of the largest um, uh, companies in the S&P today is much lower than it was back in 2000. True. Two, um, PEs, I think I mentioned that it's PE, a high PE is just a reflection of expectations that the E component will catch up. There's no bull market with low PEs. Low PEs are a reflection that something's wrong as a market. Mm -hmm. um, and you were talking about the big volatility in these FANG stocks. Um, the kind of growth that they've put up um, does not warrant a low PE. So you're going to get a high PE and 
It's a growth stock that needs to uh, catch up. And PEs um, tend to exacerbate the trade. So, for example, nobody goes to sell Amazon because it's got a high PE. And they woke up one morning and said, hey, OK, too expensive. But when it starts breaking, the high PE of it makes it a lot more mm. uh, volatile and, I don't know, give it an extra 5% mm -hmm. sell off. But we had another dynamic in the stock market. And the report just came out of JP Morgan the yeah, last hour. Yeah, I want to talk about this. Um, I haven't fully read it. I just, I just read it as I was, uh -huh. I was coming here. Um, JP Morgan, quantitative strategist, um, he, he says. He's very well known. He's very well known. And it's, it has to do with all this passive um, versus active money in the market. And he says t only 10% of stock trades are initiated by uh, fundamental investors. People know, buy, and sell on any given daily basis. Um, the market as a whole is no longer trading on, on fundamental investors fundamentally buying into a stock and thereby moving it. This is big pools and sloshes of money that have to do with factor trading and these FANG stocks and the, and, mm -hmm. and the NASDAQ 100. When you slice a whole portion of money and you release it to the market at a push of a button, mm -hmm. Um, it can have impact, and then, and then there's a pile on. Um, I always said that passive products have nothing to do with passive pricing. It's a passive product because that's how it's set up. Mm -hmm. Passive growth, passive low vol, pa you know, the, the, the has, factor is passive. It has such a dynamic impact on the price. Sure does. They're price insensitive. Yeah. It's a passive product, say low vol, so these are the stocks that you need to buy, boom, 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 boom. You go out in the market, they're not price sensitive, they must invest this money. So, Diana, though, what does that mean then, and, and what, what is his conclusion in terms of probably how this impacts the, the market? And, I mean, if this is the rule of the game, which it is, and, and because that's, you know, what, what I was hearing last Friday when these stocks rolled down, it was because it was a massive quant, a monster quant trade. Mm -hmm. So um, what, what do you do as a money manager and trader, and, and what do we need to do? What do you think? What's so, his conclusion? So you have to find the balance between your long-term view and your short-term risk tolerance because it can be high. So at Barometer, we're tactical. We press on the gas on the sectors and stocks that we really like for as long as they work, and we are not afraid to overweight. But then we also have risk management tactics be it stop losses that are a function of all kinds of metrics, be it overlaying hedging on the portfolios, because it's those short-term losses that don't allow you to stay the course on your investment because you're losing too much money and you must get out. Okay. What, so the balance. The balance, which you've talked a lot about. You know, over the past year or two, certainly you've had more of a barbell approach. Yeah. What are you doing today, though, in terms of where you want to be invested in what sectors? And I think you might have a stock or two for us. <laughs> we, <laughs> are, we have been overweight technology, and uh, in the last few days have uh, forced us out of certain uh, weights. I haven't taken stocks to zero, but you can certainly take your weights down. Um, and uh, purchase back some or add to our, our financials. So that was about an extra 10% taking from one to the other. We are still fully invested. We still like the market. This kind of rotation is healthy for the market. It allows for excesses to be traded down and allows the market to regain footing and take itself to the next leg. Mid caps have worked well. Hmm. Financials are an important sector. It should not stall. It should not just drive, uh, market should not be driven only on the leg of one sector, call it technology, particularly that we know, yes, it's a great sector, but it, we know that the volatility is larger, both in terms of its quarterly revenue, that's why it's volatile, the quarterly revenue uh, metrics of technology companies are not as stable as, say, a REIT. Mm -hmm. You know the cash flow and the forward looking forever. Mm -hmm. um, with technology, one client, especially the for smaller caps, one client can skew your whole revenue. Um, so what about the split are. between Canada and U.S.? Yeah. So we've been overweight U.S. for a very long time. Um, with, look, with energy not working, Canada is at risk. Um, we did have uh, the Canadian financials as part of our financial weight back three months ago when it was at this highest. Um, but we, and we spoke about this, the stop losses have taken us out as it was coming down. And we stayed with the U.S. We have exposure to Royal. Um, you know, Canadian dollar strength, um, taxation, 
Um, it could stall the housing market a little bit. Um, so if energy is not going to get relatively better, mm -hmm. which for now we don't see the signs, it might. We don't project, we don't predict, it might, but not yet. On the trading desk, certainly people are picking their spots on the uh, large cap mm -hmm. um, oils. I think people are thinking that if the growth rate, um, if the growth trade the, in the form of FANG, uh, the FANG stocks, yep. um, if that trade has stopped, the antithesis of that is everything that didn't work. Right. So people are trying to pick their, their spots. Um, financials have stalled and just started to um, rally up again, and so maybe People think that maybe um, the large cap oils have gotten low enough and mm -hmm. are picking their spots. Certainly there is a gold trade going on in Canada. Mm -hmm. There's a big rebalance on Friday. Very, very big rebalance. And, um, and so what else? We're in so financials, technology, consumer discretionary. We, um, and we play some very different themes like lithium mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, you know, um, home builders are doing really well. So actually the derivative of home builders, so maybe right. timber stocks or okay. uh, stuff like that. Okay, Dana, great to be with you today as always. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank for you having so me. Much.